Yeah. Oh, that's a Okay, so positive, negative, and um, it goes full 12 volts in. It's got a bubbler set up to allow, uh, you can control the amount of air that's going into the tank, and, and it's also got a pressure release valve here in case there was ever too much stuff built up. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I got a 20 amp fuse. As a safety precaution, if this ever drew up over 20 amps, it would blow the fuse, because we don't want to kill the alternator, you know, ultimately make it harder on the vehicle. Right. Um, I could run it on an on-off switch. What I have this is I basically have it on a fuse inside the fuse box of the car that's only connected to the AC of the of the ignition switch. So when when your key's on, this is on. Right. So when your key's off, the uh, the unit's off. Um, this is simply a precaution. Whereas if uh, this were to get hot enough to draw over 20 amps, the fuse would blow and it would shut the system down. Right. So um, that's where we're at right there. And again, pressure release valve because this is ready to made. This is ready-made hydrogen and not storage, so we right, want or compressed. To, yeah, that's right. We don't want to have any kind of storage. If if this was to continue making hydrogen on an engine failure or something like that, it would just blow off and dissipate into the atmosphere. Right. All right. We got two vacuum lines. One is set up into the uh, the air intake assembly right here. Um, this would be for acceleration when your when your vacuum is being shifted through your air fuel your air fuel mixture is being shifted through your your breather intake. Um, and on idle, we have it going directly into the uh, throttle body of the uh, of the intake manifold, right. um, where vacuum's at, the, at its highest on idle. So yeah, what I can do is I can start the vehicle up, um, and I'll give you an example too. Like when you suck on a straw, if you plug the bottom, you're not going to get any air through it. So it has to have a continuous cycle of air. So the air bubble is connected to a six inch hose that goes down to the bottom but puts fresh air into the bottom and the gas comes out the top right so that's how it works to be continuous suction so right when I start this up before I even put power to it you're mm -hmm. still going to see bubbles and that's not hydrogen right generation. Just, that's just straight just, air exactly okay so, so right. I'm going to see if we can see that yeah okay yeah these are pretty bright in there. hopefully you can see that <laughs> Plenty of hydrogen gas. And you should start to see gas production up to that point. Yeah. And now, hopefully, you can see that, but you should be able to see the, uh, <coughs> the, the uh, whitish colored gas, I guess. I just came to a realization, too, what I may do is I may switch from using a MAP sensor enhancer to going to uh, an EP, which is an electronic fuel injection enhancer, because basically this controls manifold air pressure and if it, with the amount of oxygen that's passing through the, uh, the air manifold, since there's going to be an increase with the hydrogen and oxygen, I'm trying to control the amount of fuel injection that's being sent to the injectors via the manifold air pressure right, sensor. Yeah. If I switch that to the electronic fuel injection enhancer, it's going to control the amount of voltage that the O2 sensor is going to be sending to the same unit the map filter does, the ECU, the uh, emissions control unit. So the oxygen sensor, obviously, is the end point. It's the last sensor in the system. It's inside your catalytic converter, and it tells the computer, too lean, too rich, plain and simple. So it wants to keep it at a steady ratio of 14.7 to 1, which is the proper air fuel uh, atmosphere ratio. So I think I may have better luck running with an O2 sensor enhancer rather than an MAP sensor enhancer in regards to controlling the amount of fuel that the injectors are receiving from the ECU. That's a good idea. Yeah, so that was a pretty frustrating venture, although I'm sure I could get it. It's just, uh, and I may end up running both, who knows? Yep. We've got a city and a highway section here, so once we have the MAP sensor enhancer working properly, two potentiometers are going to control the amount of fuel injection that um, your ECU is getting based on the signal from the MAP sensor enhancer. Again, it's going to read a lot more oxygen 
inside the intake manifold because of the hydrogen generation so it's by design going to tell the ECU that it's too lean and to send more gas so we're trying to avoid that by taking away some of the voltage that it would say through some resistors and a potentiometer now this is set up but right now the capacitors or the resistors are not resisting back any of the um, any of the electricity that's coming through this so right now when I flick the switch to turn it on it's basically leaning the car out so much that it stalls the engine yeah so that's where we are right now just uh, I'm gonna have to redo the resistors on the inside put some stronger resistors that can withstand that 12 volts coming through and then be able to play with it that way yeah so that's uh, that's basically it's in operation it's just not working uh, it's just not being used at the moment just because of the uh, resistors that need to be changed yeah